13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peters, driver of the number 17 Toyota in our NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
involved in this type of racing for the entire time that I've worked for the company. Now, are you all involved in any other type of racing? Yeah, actually we do. We do uh, the Modifieds. Uh, we've got a, a company that we work closely with. Uh, we have uh, a lot of brake calipers and rotors on the, the NASCAR Modified Tour. Uh, we do, we're now expanding into the road racing market, the Tudor Series. We're doing uh, brakes for that, for that series, too. Uh, Project Mew is the brake pad that I told you about earlier. They're, they're actually making pads for us now to, uh, to run in those series. So we're, we're expanding anywhere we can go that we can help people with their brakes. Uh, that's what we're doing. Well, you said you had 30 out of, what, 43 cars this weekend. Uh, what are you all looking like at the oval tracks? <laughs> Since they were at a uh, road course this weekend, I mean, do, do y'all usually have about half of the field at an oval track too, or? It, it's getting bigger and bigger for us on the intermediate track. Uh, brakes are playing a bigger part in, in holding the nose down and uh, good modulation for the driver so he's, he's not feeling too much brake, but he can, he can control the car with the brakes a little bit. So we're expanding into the intermediate. Uh, we're selling more brake pads to the intermediate track. Some of the bigger teams are now buying those pads from us. Uh, so that that's going really well for us right now too. All right. Now, how how did this get started? I mean, what, it, who started the company? And are, are they into racing? And then they felt there was a need for the brake pad, or you know, the business, and, and started it. Yeah, the, the company has three owners: uh, Chris Norburn and Helen Miller and Ashley Page. And Ashley actually used to work for the Nissan GTP program uh, when they were big, back when uh, uh, Jeff Rabham drove for them and stuff. And uh, he, he is he's a very smart individual, and he's the one that developed this brake dyno, and uh, we have taken it to, to a second level by putting the computer on it and allowing the teams to come in and hook up their engineers to hook up to it and download information and go back and, and look at exactly what they need without having to go to a racetrack and uh, try something on a car. So it, it, it's ever-evolving with us every time we do something. Uh, it, it leads into a different area, and it's just an evolution that's, that, ever since I've been there for the 18 years, has just gotten bigger and bigger. Well, how long have you guys been seating the pads and rotors together and, and selling them as a package? About, about 20 years. Really? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the brake pads, uh, there used to be a company called Mintex. Uh, those brake pads were actually developed on our dynos. And at one time, they were the, the most popular brake pad in the in the garage area. Uh, but a, as the cars evolve and the brakes get better, you are constantly looking for something to make it better. Because the one thing I tell everybody on, on a race car, you fix the weak link, it's going to find something else that's weak. You're constantly chasing something on that race car uh, to try and fix it. So every time you fix something, there's something else that, that's going to have to be attended to. Now, what, what is the biggest thing you guys fight? Is it like heat in the pads, or is it the rotors getting too hot and, and not deflecting enough heat, or, you know I mean, and then bowling the brake uh, fluid? We, we don't see much bowling of the brake fluid anymore. The, the teams have their cooling packages so good that, to be perfectly honest with you, coal is just as bad on brakes as hot. You have a cast iron rotor. Uh, you have a brake pad material that needs to bond to that rotor. So that rotor needs to run 900 to 1,000 degrees. When you see a rotor glowing red on TV, it needs to glow red. Now, it, it has a threshold. You can get above a temperature range, and the brake pad will start to fall off, or you'll start to get grooving in the rotor. But cold rotors actually chunk a brake pad, or a driver will feel that with a vibration in the brake pad, uh, in the pedal, more than a hot rotor. So it's just as bad as hot, and it, it's hard to get people to understand that, but uh, we, we found that out on the dynos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something I wouldn't have thought. How much involvement do you have with the, the teams itself as far as like testing out things or, or special requests that they for you to, to help them out with their brakes? We, we actually have some of the Sprint Cup teams that have come to our facility and developed their own bedding program. And so when we get their parts and pieces in, we bet it to their specifications. Uh, their engineers have come in and uh, figured out the best way that they want their brakes. Every driver is a little bit different. If you have what you call a light foot breaker, he doesn't put much line pressure in. He's going to feel more in the brake pedal than a guy who really stabs the pedal hard and, and has a lot of brake, brake pressure on the, on the system. 
So different drivers want different things, and that's why there's so many different brake manufacturers and brake pad manufacturers out there. So with the brake dynos that we have, we can actually watch where a brake pad does what at what temperature and what line pressure. And we can cater it to a specific driver if that's what the team wants. Do you all do any testing as far as with the teams so when they go out to test, to go with them to check their brakes and test with the brake systems they have? Absolutely. We've got, a, we've got a lot of nationwide and truck teams that run our brakes. So when they go to a test, we'll go to the track with them and take brake temperatures. If they've got a problem, we'll give them suggestions. We go to the racetracks for, for, uh, for the teams and take temperatures. I'm going to VIR this weekend for the k and series. Uh, last year when I was up there, we had 22 out of the 24 cars running our brake pads. So it was a very mm -hmm. successful weekend for us. Well, that's pretty awesome. I don't think people out there realize how much uh, engineering and technology goes into the brake systems nowadays. Um, you explain to us about the dyno and everything else. Uh, normal day at the shop, I mean, I imagine there's a lot of testing and R&D going on. Yeah, we, we're non-stop. The dynos never stop running. Between bedding the brake pads that we sell and the brake rotors that we sell and bedding the customer pieces and parts that come in, the, the dynos never stop. They're, they're running uh, constantly, all day long, every day. Now you said there's a difference in some guys that brake harder than others. What what do you guys do differently for for you know for those two different drives? Because I would have thought you know the brake pads and rotors would pretty much be close to the same. Well, it, it is, but you have to get the cast iron to a certain temperature. If you've got someone that's got a light foot breaker, when he puts his pedal up there, if you'll look at a brake rotor, if the temperature doesn't come up, the pad layover on the rotor will look a little splotchy. You'll see spots in it. Well, those are high spots on the rotor. And if the guy gently has his foot on the brake, he's going to feel that. Now, a guy who has a lot of line pressure and really stabs that brake pedal, he's going to get it hot and it's going to go past that. He's not going to feel that. So, let's say when we go to Richmond, that's the worst racetrack that we go to for people having a vibration with their brake. And the front straightaway is so long that the brakes cool down so much that they're cold when they get in the first turn. So, so the challenge for the teams is to take that nose off, to get those brake rotors to stay at a constant temperature within a temperature range that that driver doesn't feel that. And that, that's an ongoing challenge with, for the teams to do that. Now, what, what is that temperature? What's a happy medium with the temperature on the rotor? The rotor needs to run 900 to 1,000 degrees, and being cast iron, that's when you see it start to glow red. Now, when we go to Martinsville, We'll, we'll take brake temperatures when they come off the racetrack, and we'll see 11, 12, sometimes 1,300 degrees. Now, that's a little hotter when they come off the track, and, and most of the time when they're practicing, they don't run a lot of fans, and they don't have all their duct work hooked up, so that's okay. That, that's, that's fine. But when they get into the race, they're going to want that brake temperature to remain at the constant temperature that, that's the best for the braking, for the pad to adhere to the rotor. And you have to have that pad transfer in order for it to stop good. That's why a green rotor or a green brake pad won't work. What really surprised me, it said that, you know, Richmond um, being one of the toughest tracks, yeah. I, I would have really thought you would have said something like Bristol or... Martinsville. Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned Martinsville, but uh, Martinsville is worse than what Bristol would end up being? Bristol, they don't use a whole lot of brakes. You'll see them going red from time to time in traffic. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see some lighter weight rotors and stuff on some of the cars at Bristol because they, it's just a momentum deal. They, they don't want them to stop very good. Right. Uh, some of the intermediate tracks, uh, they're actually using more brake at Darlington than they will at Bristol. Wow. When I've talked, I've talked to Lee when he's, he's worked with many different drivers, and he's told me about the light, the lighter pedal driver against the, I mean, it was, uh, I think it was last year he said Jeff Gordon had won the tracks burn up brakes in every practice. They had put they had put brakes on on after after every practice. But then when he was with Clint Boyer, he said that was the easiest guy on the brakes. Really? And I would have thought it'd been the opposite. Well yeah. I thought it'd been the other way around. Yeah, it was Clint's kind of a yeah. yeah, every every driver's different and, and that's why the setups are so different. One guy can't get in another guy's car yeah. run because he doesn't like that setup. Well it's the same way with the brakes. You have to adhere to the driver to give him the feel that he likes going into that corner. Or he's not going to go in there 200 miles an hour. <laughs> well, you got the K&N race coming up uh, down there at VIR in Virginia. Um, 
beautiful track, isn't it? And a lot of tough competition within that series. That was a good race last year that they put on. It's a great series. It's a great series for us. Uh, we enjoy uh, dealing with those people in those cars. And they welcome us to come to the racetrack. They ask us for the advice. We're happy to give it to them, and uh, they're very good customers in that series. Well, how many how many races a year do you go to? I mean, are you gone every weekend? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> how those guys do it every week? We we have uh, three guys at, at the shop: uh, Dennis Beaver, John Hayworth, and myself. And Dennis and John are gone just about every week. Um, they're going to Mid Ohio for the nationwide race, which is why I'm going to BIR. I try and coordinate as much as I can through the shop. I don't get to go to as many races as I used to, but uh, somebody's got to be there to coordinate the shop because we're so busy getting things through there and getting things scheduled. Um, I don't get to go as much as I used to. Now, how did you get involved in racing? Well, um, my father worked at a Ford dealership in Indiana, a little known, little known Ford dealership, Ed Martin Ford. And in 1963, Curtis Turner was banned from NASCAR. And so Curtis got together with Ed Martin Ford, and they ran USAC in 63 and 64, and my dad was crew chief, chief mechanic on the car. Um, so I got to know Curtis Turner for a couple of years there when I was six or seven, one of my, one of my heroes, and I was hooked uh, from that day on. And, and I always wanted to drive, so I moved to North Carolina to race, and I actually raced out at Concord Speedway and got to run at Charlotte a couple of times in sportsman races. Won a track championship at Concord. But as everybody else knows, if you don't have the money, you're not going any further. So I got to go to work for Dick Hutcherson, one of my other childhood heroes. And uh, it started me down the parts road, and I ended up where I'm at now. Well, that's cool. I mean, to be working with somebody like, you know, knowing somebody like Curtis Turner back in the day. And, yeah. and I know you've got a strong opinion about him going in the hall, too. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that day. I know it's going to come. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. All right, well, Doug, we appreciate your time tonight, and hopefully we can get you back on sometime again and get in a little more detail. Well, you guys are welcome to come visit our shop. I think you'd be amazed at what we yeah, can do, cool. and uh, you're welcome anytime. All right, man, we appreciate it. Hope to see you at the track soon. Thank you very much. All right, Take man. care. That'd be interesting. That, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed that. I don't think people really understand how much research goes into things like yeah. that. I mean, you know, you think everybody thinks that you put a set of brake pads on there and that's all you need. Yeah. 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 I mean, I really so didn't realize more. it was that. I didn't realize they seeded them before they went on the track. No, which is a great. I mean, that's a great idea. I didn't realize that Martinsville would be the hardest. More at Darlington than Bristol. I especially appreciate the comment about the splotchy pattern on the rotor. Yeah. You know, for, for light. Did you hang up on? Let's talk racing. Hello? 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 Hello, how are you doing? How are you? Well, we're good. You got Jack Dawson and Scott Allen and Brian Morehouse and Roger Brim here tonight. And uh, yes, yes, I was in practice still on the way now to Charlotte. Um, I was practice with my team, with racing. Uh -huh. Um, it was a good practice. It was a good, good, uh, good day. Oh, good. <laughs> Where, what all kinds of racing have you been involved in? Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. It's on time. The communication is not so good. Tell me again, please. So, what kind of racing have you been involved in? Didn't you start off with open wheel? I was, uh, I was driving many different cars. I was driving prototypes, I was driving uh, open wheel cars, Formula E and in Europe, and IndyCar also. This is what I was doing before, I was doing just so many different cars, and now just I'm going to make another big step in my career, like going to the national wide. Well, from what we're reading uh, this week, uh, now you've uh, inked a deal to be able to uh, run nationwide. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very happy for that. I was making the transition in the last three years from open wheel cars uh -huh. to, uh, to NASCAR, uh, to a stock car. I was driving with Inarca. Mm -hmm. 
Um, last year it was very good. I was full year with Ben Turini. Um, it was a very, very good year for me. I see a uh, Paul in Talladega, living in Talladega, living in Daytona. A few top tens. Um, finished sixth in the championship overall. Mm -hmm. so, um, sorry. Now what tracks are uh, what tracks have you tested at so far with a uh, nationwide car? With nationwide, we test in Motor Motor Mile. Motor Mile here in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are going to have another test. Um, few races this year. Now, uh, what tracks are you looking at uh, participating in with the nationwide car this year? Oh, uh, did you want to make an announcement? Uh, but I'm going to have a few, few ones, maybe around five, six races. Okay. More than seven because I want to, to keep the option for the Rookie of the Year when I made the full championship. And if I do more than seven races, I love the opportunity to do that. I understand. So are you still going to continue with uh, doing some ARCA races this year? Or are you going to uh, put all your concentration towards Nationwide? Uh, I'm going to... Sorry, I didn't hear you well. Are you uh, are you still going to continue to try to uh, participate in some ARCA races, uh, you know, for the rest of the year, or are you just going to start uh, pretty much looking at doing nationwide races? Pretty much, we nationwide race mainly if I if I can, I can do some practice uh, or another race with ARCA, but basically uh, races with mm, with uh, nationwide. Gotcha. And have you found a lot of difference between the ARCA car and the Nationwide car practicing? Uh, different, you say? I said, uh, are you finding a lot of difference between uh, being behind the wheel of the ARCA car and then getting behind the wheel of a Nationwide car? Yes, the ARCA car is very difficult to drive. When I compare today with the Nationwide car, it doesn't mean that the National Way car is easy, but the Alta car it was moving so much, um, it was like a little bit more difficult. I gotcha. Uh, in, yes, but uh, still in this car you have a lot to work also, because you are looking for a few tenths of a second, no? for tenths of a second, uh, it's just a little different. Right. Now we're starting to see more and more people come from open wheel. Uh, can you give us a little bit of insight, uh, maybe the difference uh, from coming from open wheel to, of course, you know, something like ARCA or Nationwide cars? Oh, yes, completely different. The open wheel car is m more lighter, have a little less weight. Um, you, can, you have options to make so many changes in the aerodynamic aspect and so uh, mechanical changes also. Um, you can force the car more in the turning with the open wheel car because you have all the downforce and in the way that you're going fast, the car is better. It's just like more set down to the floor. With the nationwide car, with a stock car, it's um, more difficult because you don't have options to make uh, aerodynamic changes so much. A few changes, not too many. Um, but it's still difficult to, to drive the car. It's more heavy, you have to take more care when you make the corners or long over slow the car too much. Um, basically, this is the difference. Now, do you ever get a chance to ever go back to open wheel um, and, you know, do any of those races? Uh, sorry again? I said, do you ever get the opportunity to be able to go back and do any open wheel racing? I will lie, but I see I'm concentrating now just with, with nationwide, that is my next step now. Uh -huh. um, just I want to work, I have so much to work with, with this car, that I just I'm concentrating now with this kind of car. Gotcha. Now how how hard is it with the language barrier talking with the nationwide crew? Is that is that a constant battle? Uh, not so bad because I was learning in the last three years because it, the language is completely different between what I was doing before uh, or in IndyCar or prototype with those cars. But just uh, I just fast and I'm learning from the last few years. And, 
Now, uh, if you had a track that you would like to go to, what would be the track uh, that you would really like to uh, be able to drive at? Uh, repeat, please. Okay. If you know that I'm driving, I'm in East Dose. Alright, if uh, opportunity comes up, which, which track would you prefer to be able to drive at? Daytona, uh, Indy, um, a short track like Bristol, maybe Richmond? Mm, I like every track. I like so much a short uh, short track. I like pretty much. I love, I like also. I love the hard speed uh, uh, track like Saladero, Daytona. Uh, I enjoy a lot those kind of tracks. It sounds like you just love racing. It sounds I like to race. I understand that. Well, that's good. Now we got a question on the internet. Is it true that you're a naval engineer? Yes, I am a naval engineer. Um, after I did my first master's degree in organizational development, and after that, I earned a scholarship to study in Spain. And I did three masters simultaneously. I was in two universities at the same time, one in the morning and one at night. So we had another question uh, come in. Um, how many uh, languages do you speak? I speak just um, English, Spanish, uh, Italian. I understand a lot of Portuguese and a little bit of German. Wow, that's really great. I'm hard enough. And you got you got a good background besides uh, just being in racing. Yes, but in recent you have to work too. Also, I learn a lot of work there, but I enjoy so much. I have so much passion for for race. Um, it's just um, hard work, but it's something when you do the thing that you like, you enjoy. There you go. Well, uh, are you able to tell us when your first race will be within a nationwide car? Oh, the thing is going to be announced very soon. Very but soon. it's very soon the race also. But we're, we'll probably end up seeing you in 2014 though, right? Oh, yes, yes, sure. Cool. We're going to make a race this year. All right. Well, uh... I tell you what, I want to thank you for calling in and, uh, you know, talking with us and everything. We look forward to seeing you on the track and uh, hopefully talking to you a little bit more in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on the track. Hey. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Did I do that right? Yeah, you did. I did that right. <laughs> I, I thought did that right. I was about to bust yeah. out there for a minute. Y'all trusted me doing something. Well, the first time of y'all two looked at me like, like, we didn't have that look. Your show, baby. <laughs> I, yeah, that was yours right there. Because <laughs> He's over here, right? You should have known, you should have known right from the start that me and Scott, we had a hard time passing the English. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want you to start talking. When, when he looked at me, I, I about lost it. Well, I mean, her background. Naval engineer? Yeah. No, it's pretty cool. And it's good it's for the sport. It brings a lot of international... We're starting to see more and more people, and it, this is great because we talk about it all the time. You need to have something to fall back on if racing doesn't make it. Um, who is the young gentleman that we talked to out west? Uh, he's going Patrick Starpoli. Going to school to be a doctor. Yeah. yeah. You know, this guy will probably be working on your brain someday. Well, Can you imagine working on that brain? Well, okay. <laughs> if he's working on that, he's going to be poor because he ain't much over to work. <laughs> I think he started liking it. <laughs> y'all two guys, the reason I'm sitting in the middle is to keep y'all two apart from each other. <laughs> Go back to your corners, come out on three. You need yeah. a referee shirt. I just got, I might have to get some pictures when we're at Dover and he's riding on the handlebars. Uh, Are y'all two going to Dover together? That's we didn't tell you that. Litter's on. Hey, what, is he the one that had the tape measure? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got to ask you that story. Let's talk racing. How you doing, Mr. Wood? How are you? We're doing good. We appreciate your time tonight. It's an honor to have you on. Do what? It's an honor to have you on. We, we appreciate your time tonight. Uh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. All right, we got uh, Scott Allen and Brian Morehouse. I'm Jack Dyson. We've got Roger Brim here. And uh, we just got a, we got a lot to talk about. And congratulations being in the Hall of Fame and, and everything you got going on. It's, it's, it's a wonderful time. Thank you very much. And Lawrence, just uh, thank uh, Roger for the computer tip. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, he's, he's good for something. I mean, I very few, but that's, that's one thing he is good for. <laughs> well, there's so much history with the Wood Brothers. I mean, such a wonderful organization. I mean, I remember as a kid and coming up, I mean, David Pearson and the number of drivers y'all have had behind the wheel. Give us a little bit of uh, background on the Wood Brothers. Yeah, well, it's uh, been a great uh, racing career, really. Uh, and uh, you're talking about watching us since you were a kid. Uh, you know, next month I'll be turning 80 years old, so uh, then uh, I guess uh, you probably was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't fool anybody, you'll still be a young spring chicken. <laughs> Now, for 80 years old, I think you're you're still getting to every track uh, pretty pretty regularly, aren't you? Yeah, I still uh, stay active, and uh, you know I still go to the shop every day, and uh, you know work in the shop about uh, well, I say every day, uh, Monday through Thursday, and uh, it just keeps your brain exercised. You know, you uh, if you don't do something, your brain goes stale. You know, we know that. <laughs> Mr. Wood, one, one of the things, my son worked over over there at the woods when he first got started a few years ago, and he used to tell us about some of the great stories you used to tell in your in your shop when you were in there. <laughs> Uh-oh. Do you, do you want to tell some of those stories? I mean... <laughs> yeah, well, after 80 years, you ought to uh, have some stories. <laughs> well, can you share the one story about a tape measure with us? A tape measure? Yeah. Didn't you have a tape measure made up that was a little uh, a little off? You mean uh, there was uh, a, a picture of a foot on it? No, nah, we, we, we heard a story a couple weeks ago that somebody was telling us back uh, quite a few years ago that you developed a, uh, a tape measure that was a little bit off and you handed it to somebody and let them cut around everything and they were like a half an inch off on everything. Any truth behind that? Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you got some of the things you don't want to remember. <laughs> what's, uh, with all the years you've had in racing and all the memories and everything, what's uh, one of the most proudest moments you've had in racing? The most what? Um, one of the most proudest moments, um, memorable moments that you've uh, had in racing. Well, you know, the, uh, I always think of uh, the 63 day Daytona 500, you know, when Marvin Page got burned in a sports car and then Tony Lund takes over, you know, and saves his life, pulls him out of the burning car that he drove uh, in the sports car race and then gets in our car and, and wins the race. And then, you know, the David Pearson, uh, Petty, 76 500 and then going to Indianapolis and uh, pitting Jim Clark and but all those uh, as, uh, as excited as they were and of course I wasn't crew chief in 2011 but uh, I think that's the most uh, excited uh, most celebrated one of circle I've ever been in with Trevor Bain won the Daytona 500 in 2011 and uh, the oldest team and the youngest driver. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was that was I was there that uh, at Daytona when that happened, and that that was really special to see that happen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said, I wasn't a crew chief or nothing, but I was so proud for my nephews and uh, crew chief Tony Wingo, you know, to win, and it was uh, Ford Motor Company's 600 win, and. Uh, it was just an Edsel Ford and his three sons was on top of the pit box, so it was all extremely uh, exciting and special. But we, we, uh, you know, thinking back, uh, we've had a lot of great moments in racing, and we sure feel uh, very. Uh, it's an understatement. Yeah. Uh, but now you, your, 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 the Wood Brothers are credited with the being the the innovators of the modern pit crew and how, how they how they how they do things did y'all spend a lot of time working in that regard to, to become that good or, or was, was that just something that kind of came together and, and, and then you developed it well we realized that and I tell this story all the time you know that in 1960 the great 
Fireball Robinson, a smoky egg. It took him 45 seconds to change two tires and fill it up for fuel. And so we saw right there, this is 1960, the first uh, World 600 at Charlotte. And uh, so we decided uh, the time to be gained and maybe get working at it. And, uh, and the more we worked at it, the more we gained. And you just uh, get everything uh, uh, worked out, and then it'd still be one weak point, and you, you, uh, all as strong as your weakest link, and then we would uh, work on that. So that's kind of how it all started. Well, what really got y'all started in racing? Uh, I mean, y'all, y'all are from Virginia, a small town in Virginia, Stewart, 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 Stewart Virginia. Virginia. What got y'all really interested in racing? I mean, was this something that uh, y'all just come along and start off drag racing or how did it all come about? How did Wood Brothers form? We was always uh, kind of competitive in, uh, in hauling lumber, you know, what truck could pull the biggest load out of a steep mountain and what could uh, uh, go over a certain hill on the highway in a certain gear and there's a rivalry between Ford, Chevrolet, GMC and Dodge in, in that time with the trucks, you know, and so uh, Glenn had this friend that started racing and he was doing quite well and uh, his, his name was Gifford Wood, no relation. Uh, and so Glenn was, got on the track with him in a practice session with his personal car and kept up with him. <laughs> if, he, if he had a real race car, he might be all right, so, that's kind of how it started, and then uh, uh, we started out, you know, Glenn was learning to drive, and I was learning to uh, uh, set cars up and build engines, and it was a learning process for both of us, and uh, it, it wasn't very long. We uh, both seemed to be doing quite well. He was sitting on pole and winning some races, and, and then along in 1956, Curtis Turner and Joe Alma suggested to Ford that they should pick us up and take us on board, and that's kind of how it started with Ford Motor Company. And you've been with Ford the whole time, and, and that has to be one of the things you've got to be gra glad about because you are longest that's the, one of the longest tenured with, with Ford, and how, how great that should be. Yeah, we, uh, we've we been with Ford since 1956, and we've always run Fords, even when we started in 1950 uh, with a 38 Ford. Uh, so we've raced Fords the whole time, nothing else. Now, you know, y'all's shop was uh, based down there in uh, Stewart, Virginia, for a number of years. When did y'all finally make the move to Charlotte? Uh, we raced out of... Stewart for 53 years, and then we've been in Charlotte ever since. This is our 64th year. Gotcha. Good gracious. Now, I, the one of the questions that I, that I think that needs to be asked, and you're from down in Stewart, and that's around the Franklin County area, where my family's originally from. There was no moonshine in your background. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he could remember. We get accused of it, but that's one thing that I would like for people to know. Of. We have never all the drop in our lives and, uh, and never have nothing to do with it. And, uh, it wasn't the way we got started. We, just, we were just uh, race-minded and uh, uh, race car enthusiasts, and we used to go watch Curtis Turner race, and uh, so it kind of went from there. Now, Curtis Turner was from down around your neck of the woods, too. Did I mean, that just seemed like a perfect match for y'all to be around with Curtis Turner. Yeah, yeah, well, he, he was, uh, he was in Floyd County or something. Uh, we just used to watch, go watch him race, you know. He mm -hmm. raced at Mount Aaron and, and a lot of those, he uh, uh, used to be a racetrack in Mount Aaron, North Carolina. I didn't know if you knew that. I didn't know no, that. I didn't know that either. It was uh, asphalt or dirt? Dirt. Dirt. Dirt? Dirt, yeah. Okay, up in Mount Airy. I'll be darned. Uh, now, you know, uh, we know about your background, Mr. Wood and everything, and setting the cars up and, uh, you know, engines and everything. I mean, was there ever a time that you raced or had a desire to? Uh, 
coming out tomorrow with the Wood Brothers and and uh, I know you can't tell us anything here anyway but uh, it seems like another new chapter is getting ready to get started. Well he can tell us we just won't tell anybody. <laughs> well you say that uh, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know I have a great relation with my nephews you know uh, I could get in and find out a lot of things that uh, but uh, they tell me things that, that when they get ready to tell me, but, uh, you know, uh, right now I don't know anything. Uh, uh, but they always tell me what I need to know. So. But, you know, Woods Brothers, um, you know, in talking to you tonight, it, it sounds like it's always been a family organization. Um, and your devotion to Ford is just, I just think that's great. I mean, 60 years with them, um, 60 through three years with Ford. That's really something awesome. Yeah, I, I feel very proud of it and uh, you know we great friends with Edsel Ford and he treats Edsel Ford uh, is just like anybody else. He don't, he, he don't come across on better than you are or whatever. He's got the down to the earth person and just a great human being. He's got his sons are just the greatest ever. I mean, I just uh, thank the world of them. Awesome. Well, it's kind of funny, and, and, and you probably don't know this, but it's kind of funny that when I was growing up, my grandfather was from Franklin County. His thing every Sunday was going and sitting in his car and listening to the races, and he pulled for the Wood Brothers. I mean, that was the, that was the big thing. You always heard the Wood Brothers. And then my son came along, and he went to work there, and I'm going to tell you something. He thought the world of you when he was there. And <laughs> and I think you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Lee Dodson? Huh? Lee Dodson? Yeah. Okay, he was he, he thinks the world of you. I told him last night that I was going to have you on the show today, and he thought that was the greatest thing in the world. He said, he can tell you some stories. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you tell him that all. <laughs> <laughs> So what are some of the, back then, y'all worked in the gray area a lot. What are some of the things that y'all worked in the gray area and did? Gray area? Yeah, yeah. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love those old stories, though. Man. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, uh, you just, uh, uh, be competitive, that's what you work at. You, you always tell... You know, you, you tell your competitors, you share secrets for your competitors, but you don't ever really tell them what really makes it wrong. Right? <laughs> well, That's got, that has got to be kind of neat to have that kind of history, man. I'm telling you. And I love going down and hanging out in the shop when he was there. It was, it was a lot of fun, and I appreciate the history that comes from there. Mm -hmm. I used to uh, kid Bud Moore, you know, uh, He'd ask you, ask you something, you know, uh, if he's running uh, better than you were, well, if he's running worse than you were, you can believe what he, what he told you. <laughs> <laughs> if he's running better than you were, you could forget it. You didn't believe a thing he said. <laughs> How often does somebody give, ask you for some information and did you send them in the wrong direction? No, I'd never do that. Uh, I wouldn't tell them nothing. No. Or, or, I would never tell them the wrong thing. But I remember one time that Jake L, I, I'm sure you remember him. Suitcase, Suitcase Jake? Yeah. Suitcase Jake. Well, he was at St. Connor with David Pierce and he was home with Moody and uh, 
Anyway, you want to know what kind of left front spring I was running. And finally I told him, I said, now, Dick, I told him, I'll ask guy what kind of left front spring he's running. And anyway, I told him, and so uh, the dog, well, he was running really good, and we wasn't running as good as we wanted to. And uh, so I said, Dick, what kind of left rear spring you got in that thing? And he told me, and of course I decided that that wasn't going to work, and uh, so I didn't use it. And so a little later on in the day, he come around, he says, you know, I didn't tell you quite right on that spring. <laughs> 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 so anyway, you, uh, you don't take everything uh, 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 seriously, what people tell you. you, you of course, you finally learn to know who to believe and who not to believe. And, of course, Dale Lemon, he was running to come around and ask you what gear you're running. And uh, he wouldn't lie to you, but uh, uh, when I said, well, what gear? And then he's gone before I can get the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. sighs> yeah, it was all been fun. Uh, uh, you know, I had a great racing career, and he's certainly proud of it. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not really over. No. <laughs> New things coming, you know, for the upcoming year. Right. <laughs> well, we appreciate your time tonight. We enjoyed having you on. And hopefully we can get you back on again. We can get into some more stories. Okay, my pleasure. And then Roger, keep them uh, computer tips going. <laughs> okay. You take care. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. I mean, what a really. I mean, which, well, I'm uh, what a legend. I'm gonna be famous as a computer guy now with Leonard. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, that that's pretty cool. I would love to oh. hear some of those stories. Though. Lee, you, Lee, Lee, Lee. Next said, time when we go to Martinsville, we'll go get him. Well, Lee said he would. They would go get their lunch, and they had a lunch room. Mm -hmm. But Lee's now, not. Did he work in Stewart or did he work in? He worked in Charles. Charles. Okay. Charles. Okay. And so they had a lunch room. And he'd go get his lunch, but wouldn't go to the lunchroom. He'd go to Leonard's shop. And Leonard loved to play with them RC cars. And okay. He loved and He would always play them with those. He also brought the old 21 back in and worked on it, had it. And they, he got in it and was driving it through the shop. <laughs> I mean, you know, at least it was just a lot of fun. But he would, he would always so sit around like and tell working. stories. Yeah, he and said. Did you ever get a chance, like when Lee started off, to be able to go to the shop? Oh, yes. Like you go oh, yeah. There? And was the atmosphere just more? We went to the Christmas oh, party. Yeah, the Christmas we went to the really nice. And it, it, it was is. oh, that was oh, unbelievable. Like down to earth. Yeah, they were those some great guys. Everything. I mean, it, everything you want to eat there. I've heard uh, one of my buddies I went to high school with. His dad grew up with Mr. Wood, and um, they would always tell me stories about this and that. And right before uh, his dad passed away, I got to come back home after a race one weekend, and. Um, he was still telling me stories about oh, Mr. Leonard Wood, this, you know, they they just it was just weird to hear about racing back in those days compared to the way it is now. Well, the, the, like I said to him on there, that it was I remember in Welch when we would go when we would be in Welch, he'd finish eating his lunch. First thing he did when he got in the car, rolled the windows down in the car and turned the radio on, and he listened to the race. Really, mm -hmm. and it, and it was the Wood Brothers. I mean, they, yeah. that was well, they were the closest was, team. I, and, yeah. and that well, they were. I mean, and if, if come to find yeah, out, they team. had a history together. Really, but it wasn't necessarily Leonard. I think it was Glenn. Mm -hmm. Glenn and his brother used to run around together. Gotcha. So I went down to Stewart one time, just passing through. Didn't even mean to be in Stewart. Really, didn't know I was going to Stewart. And I saw the Wood Brothers signs. I told my wife, I said, we're going up there. We're going in there. And I went in and started talking to Glenn. And I mentioned yep. by them, I mentioned the name. And, man, I started getting all kinds of stories. Right. And, you know, it, it's just, I mean, and then to have Lee go there and work, mm -hmm. you know, was a big deal. I mean, that, right. to me, that was a big deal. It just went full circle. Mm -hmm. well, I remember when they, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll end up saying 11 years ago, which would have been 2003. You know, I guess that's when they made the move down to Charlotte. Man, that was a big deal about them moving yeah. from the yeah. small town of Stewart. Um, but they that was, had to. But yeah, that was a that was a situation that Ford kind of put the pressure yeah, on. So really? you got to well, be they, there. They were, they were in around the 
around and Roush. Because they wanted them to be there, and you know, you know, Roush was the the lone wolf yeah. back then, and mm -hmm. you know, and it kind of. Well, I think it was to try to help them because they were struggling, yeah. and and I think Roush sort of took them under their wing there a little bit or something. Tomorrow, tomorrow when the announcement yeah. comes out, he'll um, know when, with us. <laughs> huh? Well, I think he knows, mm -hmm. but he's smart enough not to say it. But when Ryan Blaney's announced as and see, I know Ryan Blaney's going to be announced as the driver of that 21 car, and, I think and it's with, a with a tie yeah. in the Penske. And, and that really shocks me. I mean, because they've been with, uh, they've had a tie-in with Roush for how many years now? Well, it basically boils down to the fact is that Penske, Sponsor, Penske Blaney is, Blaney is the, the the next in the line gotcha. at Penske to get him what they, you know, to get him moved into the right direction. That's the perfect situation yeah, for him. Right. So now they're going to throw their technology and everything to the woods, which is outrunning the Roush stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. So, you know. I would love to have a list, like Junie Dunleavy did uh, about yeah, seven yeah. years ago. As we know, Junie Dunleavy passed away this year, but he had a list of how many people had driven mm -hmm. points. Even if it was for one race. I got a, I got a card. It would be awesome. You got the card, to too. have one of the Wood Brothers. You got one of the cards, too, where he had the, the card with all his drivers on it. Yes. Yeah. And he signed it for us. Really? Yeah. Wow. That'd be really good. That was on the line. All right, guys. I'm going to get on out of here. You sure you don't want to stay in no, there? No, I got to go. Oh, I got to go. So, <laughs> Roger's going to switch places with me. Hello, Mr. Pierce. It's a wonderful day here in the neighborhood. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? How you doing tonight? Okay, I'm headed to D.C. I'm up at uh, Foster Fredericksburg right now. Well, I was there yesterday. Any traffic? I'll pull over just to talk to you. Oh, okay. Well, that's a, that's a great thing. I'm glad you did. And uh, Roger's done slipped in here, so I guess he's got something he wants to say. No, I'm just going to, I'm swapping places with our famous mm -hmm. Mr. Morehouse over here. Well, you told me, you're going to tell me what you think happened and where you think it's going to go from here with Tony and what happened up at uh, Canandaigua. All right, I think I can do this in five minutes or so. I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's picking on you. Oh, so okay. This is fair. <laughs> I, think, I think we can discount the on-track wreck. Just don't even factor that in. That had nothing to do with what happened later, except that he got that young man in a foul mood. Uh, Roger and, and I, we, we've seen people forever, getting out of race cars and walking down the track, pointing their finger at people and throwing things. Mm -hmm. And up until Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, I never saw the first thing written or suggested that that should be outlawed. I mean, you'd think it would be common sense, but, but nobody, it's the kind of thing you don't think to say, oh, by the way, don't walk in front of traffic. Mm -hmm. you, you don't say that. Um, I, I don't. I don't think for a second that Tony intended to do what he did. It never ever crossed my mind that it might be intentional. What I think he might have done, he might have meant to just kind of swerve at the kid for just a nanosecond, or whether he intended to buzz him a little bit just to kind of show him who's boss. I can see that happening, knowing, knowing Tony like I do, and watching him up close for 20 years. I, I think I can understand him making a gesture to tell that kid in so many words, don't come over here trying to show me up. I didn't do a thing to you on the racetrack. Now, I've never driven a sprint car. No, nobody in your office or your room right now has ever driven a sprint car that I know of, but everybody says that if you burp the throttle just a little bit, it'll, it'll tend to kick out. Now, whether the kid took one step, well, obviously, he took one step too many, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think the kid expected the car to kick out and hit him. Uh, there's no way to imagine he thought that he could intimidate Tony Stewart walking. So I, I just, I think it was a confluence. It was what they call the perfect storm of, of a driver whose reputation 
his dad for being a hothead and a bully and a belligerent, arrogant thug. And the young boy walking down a dark track, not very well lit, and... In a dark uniform. Yeah, but the uniform also had white piping on it. It had white stripes on it. So, with the video I saw, Jack, you could, you could clearly see it. But we were also watching from the side, not from the front. Mm -hmm. The right. piping's on the side of the outfit. Right. Now, whether Tony could see him from that, that angle, I don't know. But, that, but doesn't, now tell me if I'm wrong, sometimes cameras have a better visual than what you can see with, with the naked eye sometimes. Yes. Yes. There, there are many times they kick up the but at, but at, white balance. One of the things that I looked at yesterday, a, a cousin of mine, we sit down and we were talking about it. And the vision of that sprint car, I'm not really sure how much Tony saw him at the side of him. He may have saw him coming up on it, but he didn't see it at the side and what exactly happened there because the wing is down on that side. Yeah, you got to remember you got a blind spot on that, right. on that and, front wing. And the wheel only look out this side of the car. And, and the tire on that side is, is bigger. It's ginormous. So, and you're right down in the car. Well, it just it seems to me that there is enough blame to go around. And, and, and the only thing you got to remember is this. If this had been Landon Castle or J.J. Mm -hmm. Yaley or Josh Wise or... Uh, anybody else. Anybody else, it would not have been a story yeah. this long. It would have been gone maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday. Certainly not front page for four days running. Now, the other thing is, if this had been Jeff Burton or Mark Martin, and the exact same thing happened, nobody would be casting a spurgeon to them as a hothead bully, he ran him over on purpose kind of charges. T Tony has, the, the thing that Tony's got going against him is that his reputation precedes him, and half the country thinks he's guilty just because he's who he is and and the other half thinks the kid is guilty for walking into him um uh, i don't know I, I mean i wasn't there none of us was there um if, if there were better camera view i mean somebody somebody posted the other day that they had found another camera or i'm sorry another fan had another view of it so, yeah, there's supposedly a second video now, just not out publicly. Yeah, maybe the other video tape will help some, but I, I don't think for a moment that they can make any criminal charges stick. Uh, the district attorney up there might try to bring a manslaughter or negligent homicide or reckless endangerment or some gray area charge, and the grand jury, I suspect, would probably maybe, uh, I think, would probably not indict Tony. So the DA could say, hey, boys, I did all I could do. The grand jury didn't see it my way, but, you know, we tried. We did all we could. But then you know that the family's lawyer has already contacted or been contacted by Tony's lawyer. There will be a civil suit, almost certainly. Um, Tony will almost certainly choose to settle out of court instead of going to court and sitting in their witness chair. Um, and I think, I think it'll all end. It may be a year. Uh, it may be, it'll certainly be after the season. Uh, but I think Tony will pay a lot of money. And, you know, I, I don't know all the details of what that settlement might be. But I think, I think Tony will, will have to pay some money to the family. Just like O.J. Simpson got, got away with murder, and yet the civil suit cost him millions. So that's that's what I think is going to happen. Well, now I got I got a couple things that you know that I I feel like I've seen I've seen it on TV for the last five six days and four days whatever it's been. I think a lot of these people that are putting Tony down. They need to know what they're talking about before they start putting somebody down. And you're getting people on CNN, these 
<laughs> they have no idea what they're talking the about. The first thing come out of their mouth was NASCAR ought to put a stop to it. It wasn't even a damn NASCAR track. I understand, yeah. And that pisses me off. Don't, and, for, don't forget, they said, oh, the spotter must have missed seeing him. Excuse me, they don't use spotters? They don't use spotters in sprint cars. I mean, sprint cars. <laughs> I just did the same thing. <laughs> but but I totally agree. I don't think people understand the vision that you don't have in a race car. because they, they and If you take a sprint car and put it right in front of you, and that wing, we looked at it yesterday. We took pic we had the pictures yesterday. Mm -hmm. You saw us sitting up there yeah, looking at no it. That one hole. side is down, and you do not have any vision on this side except maybe that much. He's saying the right side. Right side. Yeah, right, right side. I'm sorry. I, I'm, never mind. But anyway. <laughs> the, father, the father of the victim said today or yesterday told a newspaper in Syracuse, everybody else saw my son. Why didn't he? Well, I don't know if everybody else saw it or not. Nobody else hit it. But just hadn't gotten down far enough down the track yet. Well, yeah, but he wasn't coming after them. Yeah, I was about to say that. As the kid was walking down the track, he he may have the, the video I've seen. He stopped once or twice to let cars go by. He did. And he mm -hmm. kept coming. He kept walking down the track, um, and I think he wanted to get as close to coming as he could to shake his finger or shake his fist or show him the finger or whatever. Uh, and he, he clearly went too far. The, the car in front of Tony actually had to swerve a little bit to miss him as well when he was coming down. One of the other things that was talked about was the possibility that Kevin actually may have stumbled just as he got to Tony's car. I hadn't heard that. I, I don't know. I don't know how that would be, but it could be. I don't know. Now, I, know, I know my view of, of being in a race car, I always thought if somebody was dumb enough to get in front of my race car going around the racetrack, they were dumb enough to get run over. I mean, I will have a different thought about it after this accident, but the only thing I can say is this. If you get out of that car in that situation and you're walking down the track, you're putting your own life at risk. You just stepped Correct. into harm's so, way. So, you know, you're, you're doing that to yourself. Well, if you run across and it doesn't state, excuse the fact, it doesn't, it, it doesn't make it any less. And, and first of all, I want to say I, I, my thoughts and prayers and everything are with the Ward family. Sure. And I understand that, that they're hurt, but he got out of the car and made the move. But everybody does it. Right. I, and I'm not, I'm not, and, and. But they don't get out in front, they don't get in traffic. But, but Al, you got some people. Well, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen drivers get close enough to cars to. Slap on the hood, or yeah. or try to go through the right side window on short tracks. I have too. Now that, you know, that's um, and I've even seen Al. I've even seen. Uh, well, I've not seen it, but I heard about it. A guy turning the car around and running back and hitting the guy head on. <laughs> yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah, and it, it, but I mean, it doesn't excuse the fact, but I, I understand that. But if you're going to get out and that happens, you put your own self in that position. Yeah. Until Sunday afternoon, yeah. I, mean, I have never heard, seen, or read anybody say, there's got to be a rule against this somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I know. But didn't the sheriff say that they had had a... a, a another incident at the same racetrack and somebody died, but they didn't know the particulars of it? Uh, I don't know. I hadn't heard that. that. There, there was something he had said along those lines. But Al, Tony's, Tony's history, and, 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 and that keeps getting thrown around. Yeah, he, his history does preclude what, you know, he has a bad history. He has a hot temper. I, I'm sitting beside, I'm sitting one pl place from a guy who has a hot temper. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that doesn't even come into play on Saturday night. Well, no, but it comes into play in the court of public opinion. Yeah, I know, and that, that, I just, I don't that's see like, that. Listen, that's like saying if, if, uh, if O.J. suddenly got out of jail and six weeks from now was involved in a suspicious homicide, <laughs> certainly they're going to say, well, they did it once, he'll do it again. Yeah, well, that's true. I'm just saying, that's... That's the burden. That's the burden under which Tony has to defend himself. Yeah. Now, well, from what I understand, 
Now, do you think the sponsorships is going to become an issue for Tony with, with this stuff? Um, you know, they, he's always managed to keep sponsors in the past. He, he's done things that people didn't like. He he got he got rough with a media person a while back at Daytona. He had that deal with a fan at Bristol. Um, you know, and they've stayed with him so. I mean, I hope not. I, I was thinking. Well, Bass Pro Shops has already come out and said they're behind him. I mean, they're. Well, I, I, I would, yeah, yeah, I would yeah, bet that. They have to. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I just don't, I, I don't see that, I don't see that being an issue right now. It, it'll make, it'll make it tense, you know. But hey, Al, some of the other stuff that I, when I was researching a lot of different articles, one of uh, Kevin's friends was actually behind Tony, and he actually said that it was not Tony's fault. Mm, I haven't seen that. Well, again, you know, there's, it, it, it may be a situation where there was just enough culpability on both sides. We know the people said they've heard the car accelerate. So you you got to do that yeah. to turn the car. But, but still, though, if, that, if doing that makes the car back in kick out, then, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, believe me, Tony Stewart did not go after that young man, either him scary, well, scary maybe, but not to hit him or certainly kill him. But I totally agree with that. But I, but even people say that he gave, he gave it gas, but there's there's so many other cars on the track, you don't know if that was actually his car or not. I mean, it doesn't really look, to me it doesn't look like his car accelerates. To me, it looks like the boy gets hung up under the wheel and it kicks the car sideways. I agree. Much everybody said they heard the accelerator, they heard the engine go up anyway. Yeah, but, but whose engine? The, 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 the yeah. bottom line is this. The young man's dead. He, he probably, well, without question, he didn't deserve it. He, mm -hmm. he was partially responsible. Um, Tony will have to pay the family a lot of money. It will never go away. It will, it will follow him forever. Um, is he announced whether he's racing Sunday or not, or do we not know? He's not officially announced it, but I talked to somebody down there, and they're pretty much sure that he's not going to race this weekend. Well, to me, that's a good call because the boys, the young man's channel, I think, is tomorrow. And at some point in time, I told this to a, a, a trusted dear friend of mine today, that, that before Tony can go to a racetrack, and walk in the garage and practice a qualifying race, he's got to have a press conference. Yeah. He's got to sit down in front of people and say right up front, it's an ongoing investigation. There are certain things I cannot talk about. As long as we understand each other, I'll answer any question I can, but it cannot be about the alleged incident. He's got to do that. Yeah. He, he can't he can't walk in the garage and go to his car and do all that stuff and not expect TV cameras and reporters and radio people to be chasing him, you know, like a like a calf chasing his mother. You know, he he's got to stand up and and talk about it, whether he says anything or not. You still got to do that. And I would think, quite frankly, I would think Bristol would be a more totally friendly audience. In Michigan. Yeah, I agree with you there. Uh, if he's going to come back, uh, I would think I would think Bristol will be the place. Yeah, I, 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 I talked to somebody down there earlier today, and they're they're pretty much assured. I mean, they haven't been told officially, but they're pretty much assured that he will not be in the car this weekend. Yeah, and that's probably a good call. Yeah, probably a good call. But again, I go I go back to the other point I made earlier. If this had been anybody except who it is, it would have been a two or three day story. Yeah, you're right. Just, just the way it is. Sure. Do you, do you think Tony will go back racing any of those sprint cars? Sure. Sure. You know, he, he, <clears throat> he might do it just to show people that he's got a clear conscience, conscience about it. Uh, he may do it. I mean, you know, he went back after the injury and almost killed him. You know, he'd run a bunch of races. He had run a bunch of races since he came back. 
uh, four or five weeks ago, and, and and I told somebody the other day that when, until Sunday morning, people probably didn't even know or didn't care that he ran sprint, sprint car races. Right. Just, you know, but all of a sudden, everything now is mm -hmm. coming to light that was not an issue before. And that's the way it is when a, when a, when a big timer gets in trouble. Now, did you watch Ricky Craven on Sunday when he was talking about it? I've, I've seen him on TV so many times, Jack, I've forgotten which day it was. Well, he was on there, and I, I'll give you a synopsis of it, and I'll tell you, you, you tell me if you agree with it. They said that if you take Tony out of a sprint car, you're not going to get the performance in the other cars because you're taking part of what, he, what he's loved away from him. And when you take something that you love away from it, 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 it affects everything else. Well, that's, that's easy to say now that, that he's gone. Uh, he missed 15 races last year. In the first 18 or 19 or 20 this year, he hadn't done squats. So there's a lot of documentation to support that. Whether it's true, you know, it's, you know I'm sure it depends on the individual. Yeah, I agree. And, and the thing is, and I wrote just for the Daily Press, which hadn't been run yet, if, if you gave Tony Stewart right now, or before Saturday night, if you gave him the option, okay, you can only run two series the rest of your life, Sprint Cup or Sprint Car, you know what he did. Yeah. He has a love for the Sprint Cars. So. Yeah, and, and he brings a lot of attention to it, and it, and it, it helps the sport. I mean, he, does, he has done a lot for sprint cars. Look, the tracks that he goes to, they love when he comes there because for them, it, it brings in more revenue for them. And they look for that. Listen, guys, I gotta go. I gotta get on down the road. Well, we thank you for your short five minutes. <coughs> <laughs> if you stop me, I'll stop. <laughs> but we, we love hearing from you, Al. Alright, well, take care. Enjoy All right. yourself up in D.C. See you later, man. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Yeah, you're smarter than I am. I will say I, I didn't. I didn't like the the lot of the 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 way in a lot of the media posted throughout Saturday night and Sunday. I, I didn't like the media members that don't know what the hell they're talking about. Right, they should have been talking. If to you don't know what a sprint car is or a sprint cup car, mm -hmm. or you don't know what NASCAR is and what a dirt car is. You need to be schooled on that before you set talking, start talking about Especially somebody. Especially when you're talking about somebody's livelihood or right. somebody's life. Well, one of the things that I told to everybody, I said, due to social media networking, all of a sudden, the whole world has become professionals at Sprint Cup and Sprint Car Racing. Well, and, no, and, no, and, well for me, it was the, the, the post. Half they of were, them don't know the difference. Well, the headlines, they were like, Tony's an accident, killed such and such. It was like he was a murderer before you ever even... I mean, that, that was the census of the... of the. This guy on CNN. I mean, this, this is CNN. This is a national CNN I mean, broadcast. And they, there's the, Tony Stewart kills guy in Sprint Cup race. Right. And see, that's that's nowhere near... It's not a Sprint Cup race! <laughs> so sprint get off it. Race. Well, if you're CNN, you Arby's should know about it. Well, but even then, they shouldn't say he killed him. Because that's yes. not true. Well, the I, fact I, I, is... I was going away from that point. Accident. It was right. An accident. It was an accident. Period. And, and and he was killed in it, or, or he was, you know. He but, was I was, but I was going away from the fact if a CNN announcer or a media person is going to get up on a, in a, on a national stage and say stuff that he he damn well better have his facts right. Oh, I, I would totally okay. agree. Okay, and that. that don't make no sense to me for him to sit there and say that, and he don't know what what's what. Mm -hmm. All right, shut up. And get off the TV. Tell me how you really feel. I, that pissed me off. I'm telling you. And the whole thing is. Yeah, let, let me ask you this. You, you've seen the video. <clears throat> the very first thing I noticed was what they said Tony hit him. Right. Tony's car never moves, thumps, or bumps, or shifts as he's going by him. Simply, I hate to say it, Kevin didn't back out, let himself get caught by the wall by trying to stay up too high up in the, in the, yeah. in the bad area. Well, that's racing. I mean, but that, yeah, that's I'm just, just saying, saying if he had backed off, never hit the wall, none of this would be talked about. Well, yeah, but you, you know, I mean, this you is all this 20, 20 hindsight, I know. Right. If I did talk to Terry, the car, it did happen. talk to Terry, and the first thing he says, first thing they tell you, 
you're in an accident, you don't get out of that car unless it's on fire. Yeah, but that, yeah, nobody right. listens. I mean, how many Wait people have done that? Wait for the truck and then you granted. come back to the uh, even, uh, yeah, How many people have done that? Nobody, nobody, cup nobody races, stays in the car. Even in the Sprint Cup races, you find your, your, your safety crew is 95% of the time there before you can get out of the car. Mm -hmm. I know one that stayed in his car. Who? And he turned it around and went after the guy. Well, you gotta, you gotta. When you fight something big, you gotta fight it back with something big. <laughs> so I'm not gonna say nothing. It's gonna else. be apples and apples and, and all. And, and, and he has a big five thousand pa person fan club. <laughs> but but I'm not gonna be at the Iraqis <laughs> over there in his club. <laughs> yeah, but my car still rolled. His didn't. But if it didn't, I get out of the car. I don't wait for nobody. I get out of the car. I mean, obviously, if there's a bunch of cars still going by pretty fast, I'm not gonna step out in the middle of the racetrack. But I'm going to get out of the well, car. And I think it all boils down to what is the procedure that they're told in the driver's meeting before, you know. I what, don't know. What's I don't their protocol? remember it's anybody not, telling us to stay in the car. It's not It's not something that's brought up in a driver's meeting every no. time. Yeah, not some, every time. Some things are common knowledge. But, yeah, but you know, but you, but <clears throat> some people have the common sense. Now, I'm not, I know I'm not sitting up here at the table with three of them to do. <laughs> okay. But have you died from eating poison in the yeah, But I know that you know sometimes <laughs> common yeah, sense yeah. common sense means something. Yeah. Yes. So don't go play in traffic. That's right. Simple. You do it on the interstate? Anybody I used to have here? a basketball coach. He said, Miser, go out and play in traffic. You know. I mean, I mean that means you want much of a darn basketball player. You should have won. I wasn't. I ended up being the trainer that taped the ankles and filling the water bottles. <laughs> you know, but I mean, like you said, I mean, if somebody ran across the interstate and got hit, they can't blame the person that ran them over. I mean, if you go play in traffic, you got to take some responsibility yourself. Right. I agree. And the thing that also got me, they said he walked over to Tony. He didn't walk. Oh. He went up charging at it. And yeah. When Tony got closer, he started at first to go, was it the 45, 46 car? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, 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 he, he started to go at that one, then he realized it wasn't Tony, and he backed up and then he charged the, the Tony's car. And that's where some of the people that I've heard and seen on the internet has, has stipulated that there was the possibility when he did that little surge that he lost his balance, fell forward. And that may have been just too well, close. Uh, I think that tire just. There's another. Money. There's also another thing saying that he went to slap the the uh, wing. The, the wing of the car, and he kind of. You can date those things are actually pretty fragile. Yeah. So uh, he went to Very slap fragile. it, and somehow or other he got. Slipped. Yeah, I mean it's sad. I mean it's a sad story. And, and I agree. And, and, and I feel I, sorry for him. Really, I, I did. I feel sorry for the family. I, I wish it never had happened. But he took his own shot. He took it when he got out of that car and went to Tony's car. He took his own life and moved. Yeah, and the biggest thing, remember, racing in all forms, there is danger inherent to all of it. That's right. Hmm. Even on rented cars. Even even, even, even rented cars. cars. Even racing bicycles down the street. <laughs> or I mean, in Dover, going to the. Dover, park. Right. No, it's electric. <laughs> you got to remember, you're in a dangerous sport, and. Yeah, if you lose your brain and you don't start thinking with your brain, you start thinking with your fist or your temper, mm -hmm. and then you're going to get yourself in trouble. Sure. Whether it's big time, whether it's small time. Exactly right. As simple as somebody running over your foot because you tried to kick the door and the tire caught your foot and run over it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree with you. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. You. For the first uh, you, time, you agree with for us? the first I thought, not you I said him uh, the, for the first <laughs> for he the, don't disagree much with me the for, for the first time I agree with you Rod I, I, he I'm, said it's the first time no he's agreed with me before <laughs> he just doesn't want you to know it <laughs> it make you feel bad yeah that's true <laughs> <See>? <laughs> best friends here you see that you see this more house uh -huh. oh lord <laughs> Oh Lord! <laughs> yeah. So we're going to Michigan next, right? Yes. No, I'm not. I'm going. I'm going home, Cortland. Uh -huh. Oh, you're talking to race. Yeah, racing. going to Michigan. We're talking racing. You really know how to live large, don't you, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> Think outside the bun. <laughs> Think outside whatever. The bun. Yeah. Yeah, we get it. Good race at Watkins Glen this weekend. Yes, it was. So. 
So are you gonna go to the racetrack with that girl from Brazil so you can uh, translate? I can't talk to her. I'm gonna, <laughs> if I if I go to the racetrack and she's there, I'm gonna have to get more house. I, 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 I tried to I tried to, I tried to highlight it. Talk slow. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's a good thing she's cute. pretty, huh? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, when she first come on, I looked at Jack, all of us lost it. Oh. I remember the TV interview that they did in D.C. when they did a sports car race. That they On a course, they laid out with walls and catch fences and temporary grandstands in the RFK parking lot. Yeah, I remember that. And they were going to do it for 10 years. They were planning to do it for 10 years, promote a race there. And they canceled it after that because it just, you know... Well, they didn't want to mess up the farmer's market, or didn't want to, you know, or, you know, it was disturbing. It. It, D.C. isn't really conducive to nah. to that kind of race, but I remember her in this, anything. this sort of, sort of somewhat eccentric, this woman that sort of some, seems somewhat eccentric, with long fingernails, and, and, whatnot, <laughs> and but really, I mean, a, a very sophisticated lady at that, and, you know... I saw a, I saw a thing where her and Danica got into it. Oh really? Yeah, yeah they yeah, got into it at an ARCA race. Oh, people would pay to see that. Uh -oh. Danica, <laughs> Danica, Danica, Danica pushed her, and she kind of looked at her like, I don't think y'all do that again. Mm. Mm. So pay per view. Look it up. Look it up on. <laughs> look it up on YouTube. How many times have you watched it? More than once. It sounds years. like it. When you do, do you do research on these guests you get sometimes? No, I got you. <laughs> I just sit here and look pretty. <laughs> well, you failed that test. <laughs> pretty bad. Pretty bad. <laughs> you All failed right. that test. Right. Sit and look pretty. See, Brian, every once in a while, i got to step from that side of the camera, get over here, and have to deal with this. Brian's thing. not here. <laughs> I didn't say Brian Did who? you see Brian I didn't there? say Brian who, now did I? Did you see Brian anywhere over there? Brian's not here. We ain't, we ain't doing that section now, so he can be here now. Oh, so he left and come back? Yes. Mm -hmm. I went and got the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got so many places I can go right now. Beer pong time! <laughs> so many places, but I'll just leave it alone. Hey, uh, what would Al say right about now? Um, it's time, time to go time in. To it's 821. It's time to I'm, I'm sitting here watching the time over here, and it's a, I even wrote a note down here, five minutes, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you can stop me. <laughs> Anywho, you enjoyed with you, you happy with what we had going on tonight? Yeah, I'm I'm tickled to death with it. All except I didn't understand milk. No. That would have been a darn good interview. That's my job. The, if Brian wouldn't have been here, we'd have been screwed. Uh, <laughs> we, I, I we, understood her. We just would have sat here and went. <laughs> we'd have just listened. When when you, when you Brian should have known when she started talking. Two guys that all didn't probably pass English in high school was not going to get I never made it to high school English. <laughs> I wasn't going to have given you a little bit of credit. <laughs> oh, listen to that. He was giving me he's credit. Like, he's uh, chairman of your club. <laughs> he's a fan club? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all 500 of them Iraqis are in your club. 5,000. Five, get it right. Get it right. 5,000 of them Iraqis are in your club. I, gotta, I have to know how to speak foreign language, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Como estas, amigo? Oh, well, now. I give you credit, Roger. At least you try. You got to do what you got to do. Yep. Anywho, hopefully everybody else enjoyed it all, as well as the comedy routine at the end. No, I think it was a good show. I did. I loved the, the break guy. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. He's a cool guy. He's a, I don't know if you've ever met him at the race. No, I've, I'm, I've seen him, but I didn't know who he was. Yeah, he's a cool that, guy. That's the hardest thing I've found is that when we do go to the races, trying to get to meet all these people we've talked to. Mm -hmm. That is like... It's impossible. I can't even get him on the phone. <laughs> he always lets his die. Yeah, I want to buy him a whole bunch of cell phone batteries. Buy, buy him one of those it. those chargers that you just plug the phone into it and it the charges battery. off of it. Yeah, yeah no one does. I got one. I think we ought to just it's just a heavier. Have him install a phone duty. Leave him chained to it. Well, you know, maybe the key thing would be just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> now you know I can't do that. That's it. You need to see my phone. Hard not to. There might be something on here you don't need to see. Mm. Where's white? Don't need to see. That's for sure. Ain't got to worry about that. Let's give a big shout out to AJ Almendinger. I know. Fairy, that, that, good, that, that's a fairy, good point. fairy tale type. I would have uh, loved. Situation. I mean, I'm so happy for him. Yeah, me too. I, that, that I mean, I was pulling for him. 
I like how he said that when they, when they had that red flag there that they were hollering AJ sucks and oi oi oi. You know, I mean that was pretty funny. Uh, but I, I, I was I was so I, I was like, that was a, it was a good race though. Well, what I thought was what I thought was funny. He was sitting there in the car and they were talking to him and he just yanked the thing out and sat there. But you you know something? I mean, for everything that the guy's been through and yeah. you know going with a team like this and it was nice to see Brad Darty's team JTG. Uh, small time. I mean, now they're going to be in the chase. Did you catch the video with him and Rusty? Yeah. Oh my God, they were just jumping up and down like Pinsky little kids. Talk to him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, Pinsky, Pinsky is a big AJ Armendinger fan. Yeah. And yeah. Big whether, supporter. And whether it and whether you know, yeah, he's driving a Chevrolet for somebody else. There was a lot of Roger Pinsky getting him in that car. There was a lot of that because yeah. they wanted him to have a ride. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, he is. He's got a lot of friends in that garage, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whether it's from so the top of an organization down all the way well, down. Right? And, and maybe this is a NASCAR, yep. lowly yeah. NASCAR official yeah. even. All right, now here, here's here's a question for you. How What's your name, sir? I forgot. Bob. Okay. <laughs> and you spell that B-O-B. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Uh, a road course in the chase. Go on, I love it. What, by what year do y'all think it will happen? 2017. 16. Uh, 16. 16. I, I, next year or the year after? I'm I sorry. think that, that the way that that race ended was awesome. Oh, I loved it. It would loved be it. awesome to have a, a, a but, road course. But for that to happen, there's going to have to be some changes at Watkins Lane. Uh, as in? That one that one particular area where that track narrows mm -hmm. up. Yeah, it's go. Is that what they call the bus stop? No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. You talk about the it's catch the carousel. Just hug it. It's coming into the oh, carousel, yeah. okay. and that's where the, the you get a lot of speed coming into that carousel. But then the track turn. just kind of narrows. And, and, you see, like and you see the fences go like this. <clears throat> Is there a bridge there? No. They no. used to have a section where they did go under a bridge, a but they relocated. Yeah, there. they relocated. That's gone. I can tell you what, that was an awesome race. You couldn't, you know, I'm not a big road racer. Guy, but I tell you what, that was I'd awesome. love to run a road race. I, I like the awesome. road races, and, and, and I mean, I really, I thought uh, the nine. I thought he was going to win it when he got by him there, and, and AJ. There was no up. way in the world that nine was going to win that race. How about, how about the comments afterwards? Ambrose, I got a very, lot of respect for. Him. Yeah, yeah. Both Ambrose of them. said he, he raised his butt off, and, and Almendinger did the same thing. It was. But good. that's good race. You that's don't awesome. see somebody just love it when they're just running. Using the eight wheels routine. Oh, yeah. You know, that, was, that, that was the cool part. Mm -hmm. Wasn't anybody who wanted to mm -hmm. And going through them as a side oh, by yeah. side. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. Well, sweet. the bus stop, when they went through the bus stop, they just all just. Mm. They just and cut it, through. And the that bus wasn't stop. the only two doing it, too. I mean, you had uh, Harvick and uh, Bush. They were running side by side. Larson. And Larson also was getting mixed in. How about you. Larson? Top five? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did good. Rookie. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. It's still supposed to be getting come on here before too long. How about Jeff Gordon finished third second, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what happened to him? Early in the race, yeah, from lap 10? What, what, right. what, what, what broke? The Nothing switch broke. broke? Nothing broke. Oh, something the dub. Like the, battery, the, battery, the battery's in there. They didn't connect it. Slid and started arcing off the side. Uh, it drained the battery. Discharged. Now, what could have happened is Jeff could have turned the motor all the way off. And then restarted it, and it would have probably fired back up. But he kept switching batteries back and forth, back and both. But you of them, really don't know until you know. There's more. Because the there's, there's, there's a procedure to restarting those right, things, but, right? Right. right. But there, there's more to the story. As they were switching back and forth, he drained the batteries. Ah. Okay. Both batteries ended up being drained. But then, on top of all that, they were three-year-old batteries. Ooh. Jeez, what? Somebody's in trouble. So yesterday in their competition meeting at Henry Motorsports, Jeff Gordon was livid. How oh, I can say that? Uh, first that thing me. he says was, "Look, we're we're a, 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 a team that's in the chase. We were number one in points. Very competitive. Three years. We can't have this happen again in the chase. I can't imagine they would even. And he was basically there. He was basically letting one certain person know." That better not come up again. Who was well, that? I, 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 Battery I, I, man. <laughs> you just... Hey, now wait a minute. Now what about Kevin Harvick? 
with the sandbags in this floor. Well, that was yeah. that was the, yeah. that was that was the stupid yeah. theory. Yeah. yeah. Twenty five thousand dollar fine. Yeah. 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 Today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Today. yeah. You got a fine today. Yeah. I didn't Jeep see the that. points though. They didn't. No, no points. points were taken away. Okay. Nothing. No. Yeah. They didn't do anything like that. I mean, it wasn't like it was performance enhancing. No, well, yeah, but played, still, I mean, yeah, that could be dangerous. Being, yeah, yeah. Line running again. I mean, there was two. But you know, you know, those NASCAR officials, they're not the brightest bunch in well, the world. Well, I do that, Scumbag. Hey, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Bob, you know any NASCAR officials like that? So you know, you pull stuff well, like that I, every now and then. I, mean, I, mean, I never understood. I never understood the weigh-in procedure on scaling with NASCAR. It, what do you mean? It's something. It's like, well, if the driver's between thus and such and this and such pounds, then you, you know. No, you weigh them. No. no I mean, but the way it is with, with all the carding, the kind of carding that I did was basically, you stand on the cart. Because it's just an overall weight. It's, see, a, it's overall. And if see, you sweat it, that's your problem. But, 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 it is. Right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're talking go-karts and well, maca karts. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. <laughs> they do things different. But I mean, they they have the same thing. But I mean, they put the bags in there to scale the car, so for cross and those type of things yeah. and, and wheel weights. They don't have to have That's, a driver there all yeah. the time. He's got appearances, to but, autographs to sign. Yeah. That car went through Maybe inspection. Yes. <laughs> that car went through inspection with them bags in the, in there. Right? Had to, yeah. That's an error. That's just a. That's got to be. You don't think it's so? More human error, and that's basically right. somebody not doing their. All right, you know, Bob. Not going down. It like had to have gone through. In the, huh? Sorry. <laughs> it's a little hard. I'm over here. I wanted to talk to Bob. <laughs> Hold it. Let's get Bob to get in here. I'll get on the other side of the camera again. No, Bob. Bob can't talk about this type of thing. But I like Bob. I like Bob. Bob's cool. <laughs> I hear a Hoover vacuum cleaner starting to kick on. I like Bob. Bob's cool. You know, it's that damn Morehouse album which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we had a good night. Catch everybody next week. See ya! See ya.